Hey everybody, welcome to Cajun Living and Cooking. My name is Rodney Dupree. I'm Carrie Erickson. And we got a cool show for y'all today. Matter of fact, it's our across the border. Yay, it, 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 we got so many things, it ain't even funny. It's, we're going to be knocking things just like this, y'all. We got Asofresco, Elote, Doritos, we got Tamale. We got too much to even Huevos tell y'all. It's, it's going to be good. Y'all hang on. Cajun Living and Cooking is fixing to start right about now. Tight line, trout line, sitting on a pipeline, waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread and mustard greens, that's how we live and it sure feels fine. Well, you can't change us, that's the way we know. Cajun people live like the dead long ago. So join the fun, live off the land, cause there ain't nothing better than a Louisiana. Trap line sitting on a pipeline waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread, mustard greens. That's how we live, and it sure feels fine. All right, Kara, it's another fine day in the old cooking it area is. here. This is actually season two, class five, and mm -hmm. we calling it on the border. Okay. Uh, before we get going with our drinks, we uh, sure want to talk about our sponsors. Number one, French Settlement Sausage. Yep. Brad, go ahead, Brad. Um, you can find all your stuff at the local stores. You can find them, um, get everything for the uh, Boston butt coming mm -hmm. up for Christmas. And the sausage really is the best. Uh -oh. It's really good. Um, Brad, loves good food so mm -hmm. he's got to come and taste our food every time that we cook it so mm. i would too we have capital city produce who brings all the good produce to us um we love those guys over there and you mm -hmm. can find their stuff at all the local stores too and if you own a store they can bring it to you so okay. let's talk about what we're going to start with as far as our drinks all right agua fresca aqua fresca all which right. is um Pretty cool. And when you start putting the things in, I'm going right, to tell them what it is. Okay. Um, aqua fresca means cool waters. Okay. Cool water. It's a light, non-alcoholic beverage made from one or more fruits, cereals, flowers, or seeds blended with sugar and water. Mm-hmm. Aqua fresca are also sold by street vendors, but you can find them in convenience stores, restaurants, and juice bars. Yeah, I was going to say, I've seen it bottled before. I've seen it bottled in the store. So... You are actually mm -hmm. putting in the mm -hmm. watermelon. So I got the watermelon in. I'm going to add um, about an eighth of a cup of lime juice. It's about half of a lime juice, and it's just going to kind of give it a little, a little tang. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the water in. So it's not really like a smoothie because it's not really frozen. It's just going to be like a fruit water. And then we're going to put a little cane sugar normally, but we're going to stick with some agave syrup this stuff is actually you know fairly diet friendly fairly keto it doesn't raise your insulin so that's always a plus so we're going to put about perfect. perfect about a teaspoon but you can always add more and this stuff is really really sweet so i'm just going to kind of roughly blend this together i'm just going to go on like let's see how loud this goes when oh go. i'm just i hope it doesn't explode okay Oh, you got it. Oh, look at there. I don't know if you can hear me out there, but what we've done is we've uh, rimmed some sugar around here. Mm -hmm. Now, what they want you to do is taste this now. Okay. And see if you need a little more lime mm -hmm. or a little more sugar in there. Okay. Or you can say, that's just doggone. That's really good. It's that's very good. fresh. The way it, Maybe a little more. I like it a little sweeter. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, you can, you can always sweeten it after the fact, so... So that's it's what good we'll like do. it is, yeah. Alright, and the other thing we have now, mm -hmm. which is a, and this is pretty neat, y'all. It's a chilada mm -hmm. called a michelada. There's a bunch of names for this. A michelada okay. is a Mexican drink made with beer, lime juice, assorted sauces, often chili-based spices, tomato juice, chili peppers, and it's served chilled with a salt that rim glass. Like Bloody Mary. It's pretty close to that, okay. but it's got the beer in it. Gotcha. Oh. The, the story behind this now mm -hmm. is uh, there was a fellow named Michael Asper in 1960 in Mexico, ordered his beer with lime, salt, ice straw, and put in a cup called a Cabello. 
And okay. members of the club started ordering the same thing he had, so they mm -hmm. wanted Michael's Lemonade. And through time, how names change, Michael's Lemonade become the Michelada. Michelada. Then you have okay. Michelada. Okay. I really like those. Mm -hmm. So, um, look, it's, it's kin to the watermelon, too. There we go. It looks exactly like it. And we've rimmed this glass with sugar. Um, and this is actually with tahini, which yes. is a little spicy. Yes. So, if you want to kind of live on the edge. It's got a little chili to it. Yeah. All right, y'all. Y'all hang on. We got a Choco chicken salad next. So, um, <laughs> we'll be right back. Dreams Come True of Louisiana is a nonprofit organization that grants dreams to Louisiana children between ages 3 and 18 with a life threatening illness. Dreams Come True was founded in 1982 by seven families in Denham Springs with a goal of providing dreams to children. All funding was initially provided by those families. Dreams Come True is proud to have one paid employee and provides dreams throughout the state of Louisiana. Dreams Come True provides an average of 65 to 70 dreams per year. Visit our website for more information. DCTOFLA.com The new, completely renovated Fred's on the River Food Mark located at the Port Vincent Bridge is now back open and better than ever. With biscuits, coffee, and sandwiches ready every morning at 4.30 to get you started. And a full breakfast menu from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. featuring homemade hash browns, pancakes, eggs, and our country-style biscuits and gravy. Our newly renovated store has all your needs from local vendors, plus cold beer, lottery, gas, and tobacco. Try our new lunch and dinner menu featuring our famous boat launch burger, overstuffed New Orleans-style pressed po' boys, 100% beef hamburgers, pizza and by far the best onion strings you have ever tasted. So come by and enjoy Fred's on the River Food Mart, where we've come back bigger and better than ever, but we haven't lost our hometown feel. Galvez Hardware and Outdoor Cooking has the largest selection of grills and outdoor cooking supplies in South Louisiana. Let our team help you select the right equipment for your cooking needs. Our unique inventory of cookware is second to none. Whether you are looking for a new cast iron or ceramic coated pot and burner, a new charcoal, gas, or pellet grill, or anything to help you with your outdoor cookout, come to Galvez Hardware because good food brings people together. You're, You're watching Cajun Living and Cooking. All right, Karen, that aqua fresca is really good. It's, it's so I, good. It's I, so refreshing. I, I got to go to Mexico to get from a, from a street cart now. Oh, I know. I bet it's really good. <laughs> All right, y'all, this is something neat that we threw together. Uh, I'd say throw together, but um, what we've done is uh, I took my deep fryer and I invented this little oh, my gizmo <laughs> wow. to drop it into the set it in the deep fryer and you put it in there and it curls up like that. That is ingenious. Well. It that worked. Is ingenious. It worked. Well, yeah. Now, the, the other thing I've done was. Um, a Cajun ingenuity. What that is. It's some secret taco sauce. Okay. So, what I've done is put some taco sauce uh -huh. in there. Uh huh. And then I put some of this Goya liquid seasoning. Okay. And put a little bit in there. Gotcha. And I think it's the right amount of seasoning for. Is that everything that's in there, or is it a secret? No. Oh, so now it's not a secret it's not anymore. A secret, okay, we gotta take that. that <laughs> only label people off. who see this know. Oh, uh, okay. All right. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave you that next. Okay. So uh, tell them what you got here. All right. So you just had some shredded chicken, and I just put a little shredded chicken in the bottom, and we have some red pepper. That was a whole chicken that was roasted at one of your local convenience stores, oh, and I pulled it apart, and okay. I didn't get you to do that. I'm so glad I didn't have to do, to do that. that. Thank you for that. Anytime. I appreciate that. Anytime. Yeah. Anytime. So uh, we just put a little bit of that uh, deboned chicken at the bottom and we got some shredded lettuce that we put next and then we put a little bit of the red pepper so it looks like you got some red bell pepper that you diced and then some diced tomato and then we have some garnish we have some my favorite which is avocado which I love you can just you know make it pretty yes indeed I'm all about making it pretty you can have uh, well I'm, if I'm gonna eat it it's gonna like. oh yeah you may so, be tasting that one Oh, well, that, then in that case, then I'm just going to look And we more. got some super sauces there. I see that. So it looks like we got a little bit of Mexican sour cream. Yes, what do you it call is. This? It, well, there's a bunch of names I'm for it, and they it. come from Honduras. They come from all around. Okay. I, I'm going to have to call it a Tex Mex Mexican sour cream. Okay. I got gotcha. you. So I'm just going to, I'm going to pretend I'm a, a famous chef, and I'm just okay. going to look at there. Keep down. I know, right? 
Next Stop Food Network. And then the secret sauce, which is not the not so secret sauce now. Now that he's revealed us, we're going to add a little bit of that to it. And there you go. Taco salad. Taco salad. Is a Tex-Mex dish that combines ingredients using Tex-Mex taco. tacos originated in 1960. Okay. All right. The salad is served over flour tortilla with shredded iceberg lettuce topped with tomatoes, shredded cheddar, sour cream, guacamole, salsa. Mm -hmm. The salad is topped with ground beef, chicken, beans, Spanish rice for vegetarians. Oh, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Now, we're not vegetarians. so Not well. in the least. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We got something else coming up. We got the Yote coming. That's the street corn. Oh, That's oh, next. And you're going to get to try some of this. So, y'all hang on. All right. All right, Kara, you um, you made one. I now you got to taste it. I tore it apart. Well, I've eaten all the avocado off of it. <laughs> and I added that. a little tahini. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to add a little bit of cilantro because I'm a big that. fan. I'm a See, big fan of cilantro. Some people that, don't like cilantro. And this is one of the things where you can go to town. You can put oh, yeah. black olives. Mm -hmm. You can put black green beans. olives, beans, mm -hmm. uh, whatever you can add in there. Uh, mm. It's nice not to Onions. have to deal with the chicken. The chicken's mm -hmm. already done cooked for well, you, you know, and all I'll you gotta do is pick it apart. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So it's something it's you delicious. would uh, eat again. Oh, most definitely. Cool. I'm cool. gonna have to make one of those little. You need to patent that thing that you made with the for the tortillas. Oh yeah. You need to patent yeah. that thing. That's next. Yes, indeed. All right, y'all. What we're doing now is uh, elote, which is. Um, Mexican street corn. And in Central America and in Mexico, an ear of corn or corn on or off the cob, elote means tender cob. Okay. Um, in some regions in Mexico, elotes are sold in the street and food carts, all right? Mm -hmm. The vendors offer a choice of seasoning, sour cream, mayonnaise, liquid cheese, chili powder, grated cheese, or butter. Oh. I guess it kind of just Ooh. depends on what you want. Yeah. Uh, the lotes are usually balled and transported, wrapped in the husk, and what that does is gives it more flavor. Oh, now, yeah. Th we on the edge of peak time for corn right mm -hmm. now, but we really found some corn at the frozen department, mm -hmm. and that's what we're using here today is some sweet corn. Yeah. So tell them what you got there. So I got a little mayo. And then I'm going to add to that a little bit of lime juice uh -huh, uh -huh. and just mix that up. So it's about a quarter cup of mayo or so. And you know, you just want to make sure that you got enough to coat your corn really good. And then I got about one and a half teaspoons of lime juice. And then I'm going to add a little bit of salt to that because corn, you know, it's got, it's got sweetness. So you got to balance that out with right. a little bit of salt. Boy, it's nothing better than fresh corn off the nothing cob, better. though. When you and that's what I was reading. Once it's mm -hmm. during the season, and when it comes out, they said there'll be street vendors everywhere selling their corn everywhere, oh, yeah. different flavors. Yeah, and you know you can make it on the cob, but then you can also make this off the cob. You can make this as like a sauce, and you can put it with the corn that's off the cob. That's in case somebody was a boxer and that's got all their teeth knocked out or yeah. something, and you don't have to chew it. Absolutely, got braces, you know. Yeah. It's so I'm just going to take my little piece of corn. I got me a little workspace right here. And it's really good to use your hands. You can use this guy, but I don't know about this guy. I'm thinking the hands. So is I'm going to use my hands. So I'm just going to slather this onto this corn. And it's just going to be, ah, oh, this is nice and hot. So we're just going to slather that on there. And you wouldn't think that it was going to be good with that mayo, but just something about that mayo with all of these other spices. Well, the neatest thing that I was telling you about is I, I went to one of our local Mexican stores, mm -hmm. all, all off the border stores, yeah. and they sell a mayo with lime and spice oh, in it. specifically yep. for Mexican yep. street corn. Yep. All right, so I got this together. So this is nice and slathered on there, and this is just going to be kind of a base for our other thing. So we have some cilantro, and then we have some co cojita cheese. Cojita cheese? Cochita. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just guessing. I don't know. I had an eye by uh, vowel. Yeah, well, there you go. So um, we're just going to go ahead and coat this with that, and I'm going to kind of crumble it a little bit. But this cheese is, is very tangy, so I'm just going to kind of coat it with it 
I can imagine being on the street with that, with the wrapper around it and gnawing on would, there. Oh, goodness gracious. I can't imagine trying to put this together on the street. I think I'd have a little bit of a problem. I'm having a problem right now. You know that, right. <laughs> you know that the corn is the most consumed food on the 4th of July. Really? Yeah. I would think hot dogs, but okay. That's what that's what they say. All right. All right, y'all. She's kinda, putting this together. I got We're going to get the taste some. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I'm going to add a little tahini to it because, you know, you got to have tahini. The chili. Tahini. You yeah, got you to have, have the, the chili, chili flavor on it. And I'm going to put that over the top of it, and then we're going to come back, I guess, and see what it looks like. And then you get to mm -hmm. wear one of them out. Oh, can't wait. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all. We got Dorito Bake is next. Y'all hang on. All right, young lady. We are rolling right along. And yes. How's the corn going? It is delicious. I added a little bit of this um, liquid seasoning from Goya. This this tastes like Doritos. So that kicks it up it another does. notch. It does. It does. It's salty and it's it's not really spicy. What but I really, really love good. about the South American flavors is um, number one, it's all fresh. Mm -hmm. Number two, you can put lime or chili on it. It's good. Oh yeah. I mean, it's it's really good. Oh yeah, anything with chili. So you add chili to a shoe, and it'd probably be good. <laughs> um, Cindy Bruno, I work with, okay. um, cooks this all the time. So this is Dorito Bake, mm. and uh, show them how you do it. All right. Well, I just opened a bag of Doritos. I'm going to take out my frustrations on this bag of Doritos. <laughs> Crush them down, and you want to get them into smaller pieces because we are going to coat. Because it was so big, it would cover this up. So you right. have to crush it down. Yes. So we're going to crush it down. And make some nice little pieces. Well, I'm just going to kind of check it and see. Let's see. Give it one more. Just a bad day. Bad day at work. Bad right day at work. There. Bad day at work. No, it's really not. But this is um, just going to get it that nice consistency that we want. We don't want big pieces of Dorito. And we're just going to... Not going to use the whole bag, but we're going to go ahead and put it in this ungreased pan. Because we're using a smaller pan, mm -hmm. now the bigger 9 by 11, you would dump the whole thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we're going to just kind of smooth it all out nice. right here. And now for our filling, we've got some ground meat that has been browned and well, let drained. Me tell you. What she was telling me is you mm -hmm. knock a little cheese over oh, the top of yeah, this. Oh, yeah, that's Remember right. We that. And this is just a taco blend cheese, right, which is just right. a, which has just got a little bit of taco seasoning added to it. So you never can have, you know, too much cheese. So we're just going to add this browned ground meat. And I'll tell them what we have in here while okay, you're putting sure. it all together. What it is, right. is uh, the Doritos, mm -hmm. a can of cream of chicken, mm -hmm. a can of cream of mushroom. Okay, oh, that's this. Cream of chicken, cream of mushroom. Okay. Enchilada sauce. Woohoo! And the cheese, and whatever right. cheese you like, you that's put in really there. That's really easy. Well, it's that's pretty. That's very easy. And so that's why the... those ladies, when they come home from work, they just whip that up, and there's, oh, absolutely. there's Dorito bake right there. That sounds really, really easy. <laughs> So I'm just going to put the cream of mushroom in there, a little cream of chicken. And then you're going to end up pouring it over the top. Well, let mm -hmm. me tell you, Doritos, an American brand of flavored tortilla chips produced by Frito-Lay since 1964. Hmm. Original Doritos were not flavored. The first oh, flavor. Just plain tortilla. Yeah, just plain. Yeah. The first flavor was toasted corn in 1966. Okay. And then followed by taco, taco in 67. I remember that. I'm kin to 1967. Oh, that, not me. <laughs> not at all. And the nacho was in 1972. Ah. Once again, I'm not kin to that. The concept for Doritos originated in a restaurant in Disneyland. Oh, okay. If that ain't the craziest thing. It's funny. I remember that taco flavor. That was that was a treat was to go to the store and get a bag of Doritos. And that taco oh, flavor yeah. was just so uh, so iconic, you know. And they, they recently brought it back a couple of years ago in the same type of, of bag. From what I understand, there's even Dorito Puffs. I haven't tried that. The 3D Doritos now. Oh, well, everything's 3D. Yeah, next, I just, next I, thing I, you know, they'll have Bluetooth, and you <laughs> never know. Well, we got Bluetooth on our dog <laughs> on cornbread now. There you go. So, what's the next thing? You pour? So I'm going to go ahead and pour this in to the pan. And this was, this was so easy. This just came together in 
what was it five minutes we hadn't even done yeah, five minutes yeah. on the segment now we had the brown the ground meat we mm -hmm. didn't get to tell you all that good stuff but yeah but that doesn't take no just drain long. the grease and here you, you can go do that you can do that ahead of time and then we're going to top it with this beautiful taco blend cheese and then we're going to bake it in the oven at for 15 to 30 minutes I think everything's I'm, already cooked so you know you kind of just want to let it kind of come together a little bit melt that cheese really good well this is one of the two things that everybody came for today. oh yeah that's what i came for and uh, she tells me you take this after it's baked mm -hmm. you use a spatula you cut it in squares and enjoy oh absolutely and it's got to be good with that melted cheese on the top all right y'all we're going to get to taste this and we've got some Wevo Rancheros. Y'all hang on, it's going to be good. All right, Holly, tell me what we're cooking. All right, we are cooking a hot tamale pie. Mm. And so we are going to start off by making some cornbread. And so I did that ahead of time. But I will say that you can make this just from Jiffy cornbread if you want to take a shortcut. Right. But anyway, <laughs> right. I did one from scratch. And so when you make this from scratch, you will need a half a cup of cornmeal, a cup of flour, three tablespoons of sugar, a tablespoon of baking powder, a fourth a teaspoon of salt, and then you add three or four tablespoons of oil when you kind of mix that in mm -hmm. to make it kind of crumbly. And then you add a cup of milk, and an egg, and guess what else you add to it to make it Mexican style? You add uh, the, the chilies. Oh, the chilies. The chilies. Green chilies and a half a cup of corn, just regular mm. canned corn. And you mix that together, and you bake that at 400 degrees for 20 minutes. Yes, okay. oh, so that's phase yeah. one. Okay, so that was All phase right. one. That's why I had to do this ahead of time so I would mm -hmm. have this ready. So when that comes out of the oven, you take a fork, and you make some holes in it like this mm -hmm. just all over and then you are going to add some enchilada sauce yes in. indeed mm -hmm. now in the meantime while the cornbread was baking <laughs> you would be taking a pound of ground meat with some cumin and some chili powder so you're going to add a teaspoon of chili powder and um, and a teaspoon of cumin, and you add that to your ground meat till it's the cooked. The cumin is the key with yeah. the Mexican yeah, flavor. Yeah, that's that spice, yeah. yeah. And so then from there, you are going to pour this over the top like this. And you I can see this out. is going to be good. You that looks good. Spread it out like this, just real easy. Mm -hmm. And then you come back with cheese so i just bought shredded um shredded mild, this mild cheddar. cheddar yeah but i mean you can use whatever you want it says to use about two cups but i mean if you want more or less that's you could put 16 cups probably right. if you, you really like it whatever you want that sounds like my kind of tamale and so <clears throat> you bake that um for t for 20 minutes um well you cover it first let me just mm -hmm. say that you cover it oh and you do cover it and you bake it on 350 for 20 minutes okay mm -hmm. and then when that is done then you take the top off and you put it back in the oven and you cook it for five or ten more minutes so mm. so you have actually baked it three times yes i mean it's kind of a you know a three-step process there and so i will show you what it looks like what when it is completed and this wow, is what it looks like. man, that looks delicious. That looks pie. really Everybody good. Asks, well, why do you? Why is it a hot tamale pie? You're not really making a hot tamale, but it tastes just like it. Hmm. It tastes just like a hot tamale. Well, here um, I did a little research. Uh, tamale pie is a pie and casserole dish in the cuisine of southwestern U.S. All right, it's prepared with a cornmeal crust and ingredients typically used in tamales. Invented in the early 1900s, around the 1910, the dish was included in the home economics classes in the U.S. in 1910. So oh, it's wow. been around for a long time. Okay. And, and I'm thinking it ain't this ain't going to be around too long. So, uh, no. Holly, thanks for cooking that. Right. We got some more coming, and y'all hang on. 
Fred's Bar on the River has something for everyone. Open seven days a week. Football on the big screen TV, pool tables, golf, darts, and the new boat launch bar. Ladies night on Wednesdays. Thursdays is open mic night. Karaoke on Fridays with DJ Rocky. Live bands on Saturday and Sundays. The Giant River Bar is air-conditioned and ready to book your company's events or your Christmas parties. Come out and enjoy a good time on the river. Crawfish season is coming soon. It's time to move into the 21st century with the new high-performance cookers and super boilers. With our new state-of-the-art technology, the 120-quart pots come to a boil in under 7 minutes and the return boil in under 2 minutes. This fast return boil is key to perfectly cooked crawfish, all while using far less propane. Now, no more mushy crawfish using the old, outdated slow boilers. Monogramming Unlimited specializes in corporate and small business embroidery on a wide variety of clothing and accessories, like shirts, jackets, hats, bags, and much more. Our screen printing department is perfect for you, a very affordable way to advertise your business, club, team, or event. We also handle business cards, promotional items like pins and huggies, trophies, medals, plaques, banners, and signs. No job is too big or too small. Call or come by today. You're watching Cajun Living and Cooking. All right, what we got here mm -hmm. is boudin, okay? Boudin. This is a Puerto okay. Rican bread pudding, all right? Okay. Uh, it looks a lot like our bread pudding. It does. I, hmm. There may be even raisins in it. I see that, yeah. Uh, American bread pudding, unlike Puerto Rican bread pudding, is served at room temperature, preferably cold, it's delicious, inexpensive, mm -hmm. and easy to make. So we put our twist on it, and you're going to put of the course. twist on it for us. Okay, it looks like we got, you know, powdered sugar on the... Right, right. <laughs> our nice little label here. So we'll just put a little powdered sugar over the top. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. Which is going to kind of... It's getting messy there. Time, yeah, oh, absolutely. Um, this looks like this is going to be some... Ah, uh, caramel. Straight up caramel. There we go. You can find that at your local grocery stores, too. Okay, just some caramel sauce. Now the kicker over the top. I have to say is this. Now this looks a little frightening. That's icing. That looks like now, a bad day at the dentist. It, so it, we'll just go ahead. Yeah. A little icing on so top. So we're just gonna just maybe do a little. All right. Look at that. Ooh. You can almost write your name. In I, I, well, I was trying. All right. And That's fancy. Let me do this part. All right. Look over there. Lord have mercy. No. <laughs> All right. We'll I put a little powdered sugar on top of that. Yes, indeed. A little right. tahine if we're not watching out now. <laughs> now, I created my own. Um, it's frozen Snickers. Now, well, it was not, frozen it's Snickers. Not frozen I was going to say, it's not frozen anymore. But let me tell you, I'm thinking this would be south of the border <laughs> if I put a little chili on it. Oh, my gracious. And um, you got it. You well, got you, it. Have, you have at it. Y'all, thank y'all for watching Cajun Living and Cooking, and we'll, Lord have mercy, we'll see y'all next time.